Hey everybody, welcome to another episode here on Digital Rcast. This is Adrian, I'm a new addition to the team and I'm going to be hosting today's interview, which by the way is my first interview ever. And I'm really proud and excited to finally be able to do this. So thank you Gordon for the opportunity and I hope you guys enjoy the podcast. Finally, I can finally interview this guy. <laughs> I, was, I was really inspired by you know, his crazy architectural creations when I saw his work online. And I was truly stunned by his artwork. And today I can finally find out more about it. So let's give a warm welcome to concept artist and illustrator, Leon Tucker. Oh, wait, let's make a proper introduction. Leon <laughs> Tucker. <laughs> it, 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 insert, you cricket, insert crickets <laughs> down here. Oh, yeah, I'm great, man. How about you? Oh, I'm fine, man. You fully recovered from industry workshops? Oh yeah, man. It was uh, that stuff was crazy. Like uh, it was pretty intense. Like I, I heard a lot of people got sick. It's probably from the information overload or whatever. Oh, it must be. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. pretty overwhelming to me. Mm. Um, but it was so so cool, man. Meeting so yeah. much people, like old friends, meet, making new friends. That was so so cool. Exactly. Yeah, it was it was truly amazing. Like for me, it was uh, especially like seeing John Harris talk because I I actually grew up with uh, like his paintings because my dad used to be like a big science fiction fan. So I I had his books laying around um, even when I was a kid. But I of course I didn't realize that um, yeah that I that I would get into like the same industry as as, as yeah he was basically in in, in his time. But yeah, it's cra it's crazy inspiring to hear like some of the first like, proper futurists to hear them talk. It oh, so really... this is this is where all this art is coming from, then? Like, how, I, I think how did you so. end, how did you end up here? Oh, you know, uh, man, I uh, it's a it's a bit of a weird story. Like as as a kid, I didn't draw that much to be honest, but I I did play with a lot of Legos. Uh, and and like I said, I grew up watching uh, a lot of science fiction and reading a lot of comics. Um, and I think when I was, I don't know, I, I still played with Legos until I was 15. And then a bit before that, when I was about 10 years old, I started painting Warhammer figurines. So that so I was always kind of on the creative side, but not really not really drawing. Like I was super shit at drawing, and I'm pro I probably still am though. But uh, I think the whole love for Lego transitioned into that whole three D workflow I'm working in right now. Oh, all right. So well, I think I know the answer to this already. But uh, where do you get your inspiration from? Um. Ooh. That's um, uh, it's it's a bunch of things. Like, of course, a lot of the the old visual futurists. Mm -hmm. Do you have a main uh, source or something? Ah, uh, I don't. But what what I tend to do is like I I do have a lot of art books from movies, uh, and and it's it's great to have them. But what I do is I look at what those artists were looking at. So so take for example, Guardians of the Galaxy. They have this city. And of course, they had their inspirations as well. But instead of looking at their artworks and draw my inspiration from that, I take, like, I look at a source like further. It's like, what what were they looking at? So what inspires me is like everything that we can find on this planet on Earth that looks overwhelming or like gigantic in terms of scale, or maybe it looks alien, uh, almost like it's alien stuff or. Mm -hmm. Like making something tiny look like gigantic. Exactly. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Like turn 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 a microscopic uh, like image into a giant city. Something like that that's something that really inspires. Yeah. Me. You know what? I've been I've been doing that in the park, like uh, shooting some pictures from very very low, close to the to the ground, mm -hmm. and I made some really tiny plants look like huge huge scale. Yeah. That's because, that's really cool. because of camera placement. So, yeah. yeah. And, and what you said before about, you know, uh, getting inspired and, and going further and finding out what those people who created those kind of artworks were inspired mm -hmm. by. Yeah. Uh, that's something I've been troubled by recently. And I've been asking this on, you know, every event I've been to. Yeah. Uh, because I, I, what do you think about, you know, getting inspired by other people's creations 
uh, um, versus getting inspired by just nature, you know, and existing things in real life already. Yeah, you, yeah, you know what? It, it's great to uh, to be inspired by other artists because, uh, of course, it, it teaches you something about their style. And uh, but in my opinion, as long as you don't straight up copying it, it's fine because your work will never look the same as that artist you you referenced because you have, uh, you know, you had a different childhood, you have different interests. So what I'd say is just like pick from from like all of your heroes, so to say, like pick something from that guy, pick something from that guy, pick something from that lady uh, and kind of use that to generate your own your own vision, your own style. Uh, and also like your, what I said, your childhood, your upbringing, your, your love for whatever that helps that. So it will never look the same as an artist you really like, even though you, you sometimes feel like you might, you might be copying it, for example. I mean, I, I had that as well, like trying to look at uh, Sparf, for example, or James Peck. Um, but it will never look the same because everyone has a different, yeah, different background. Mm -hmm. You always, let's say, put your own into it you know your mm -hmm. own twist to yeah something that's already existing yeah man holy shit i'm looking at your <laughs> your portfolio here and you have some really awesome stuff dude thanks so much it, it's i don't know for me it feels like i should really sit down and and, and try and improve myself because so and you now did I, i've been following yeah. you for years now well well years like three yeah. years i think or so because that's uh -huh. when I first started as well, working professionally. So I was, you know, like a sponge trying mm. to catch up to everybody out there. Yeah. And, and I saw your work and I'm like, holy, what this dude? How, <laughs> how is this possible? Yeah. Well, thanks. It's, uh, you know what? But, but when you're looking at it yourself, like you don't see the improvement as much. Yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> All so, the time. Yeah, uh, exactly. So for me, I've been stuck with the, uh, like... Uh, a workflow that is pretty efficient, but it also keeps you in in like a corner. Sometimes you you almost get stuck to using that same workflow over and over because it's uh -huh. so fast and it, it gets yeah. you so many results. But it limits you with creating a specific type of imagery. Mm -hmm. Like you see all these top down images on my uh, on my art station. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. your um, copyrighted angle, right? Uh, exactly. So it, <laughs> that for me comes very easy. And also, of course, I love to create like gigantic landscapes and uh stuff like that uh but it also yeah it, it it tends to limit you a little bit if you if you're just doing that over and over because if if i work for clients i also do this kind of work uh well actually i want to create like busy market scenes with characters all over but i mm -hmm. i can't draw characters <laughs> that's, yeah that's so fun. so it has its its bad sides and its good sides as well yeah, yeah. because you know you kind of master one thing and then on the other side uh it holds you back into this comfort zone you know like you're exactly. always you feel like you're always doing the same even though it's so cool and so good you kind of want to explore more and yeah yeah i think it's a good thing to do like a good exercise to tr every every now and then try something different mm, absolutely and I totally the thing agree. you just said yeah that's um that's something I definitely agree to because, um, you know, I thought I was really obsessed with certain subjects like environments and I mm -hmm. don't want to do characters. I only want to do environments. But then I also had this feeling with characters, you know, like I know I'm not good at it, but I enjoy doing it. Yeah, and absolutely. and maybe in time I will get good at it because I, I like doing it. So and, it's, and, and it's logic. Yeah, and that's a great point that you're making because you, you're saying you enjoy doing it. And and for me, that's the most important thing. Like, as long as you're having fun, it's so easy to learn because, you know, you're enjoying yourself while doing it. You're not mm -hmm. forcing yourself to, oh, I have to learn characters. I have to learn how to draw max, stuff like yeah. that. So as long as you, you're really having fun and you're really enjoying it, it will come to you. Like, it might take time, but you will you'll get there. Indeed. Yeah, I, I agree. So yeah, it, uh, have you have you like I don't know I saw you sketching for the first time in in life I mean in London yeah and I wonder if you sometimes do some organic stuff I mean don't get me wrong all your creations are pretty organic but they're still hard surface you know yeah yeah it's true but I mean something like like creatures characters I don't know stuff like uh, that. yeah so um 
that's that's like my really like my Achilles heel. Like I'm super bad at, at drawing uh, things that are alive. So characters, creatures. It's something okay. that I would definitely want to do. Um, and I think now is ex- the moment to do it. Now I have a little bit more like steady work, and I have to don't have to worry about financial situation so much. So mm-hmm. I might take a step back and maybe try and draw more organic stuff. I, I recently started doing. Um, a figure drawing in the morning so that's yeah that's something but i know it's slow progress but i would love to be able to to draw like full-on scale uh city like scapes with characters walking around and doing their things and mm-hmm. telling the, telling a story with it yeah that's storytelling yeah exactly well, that's something important as well mm-hmm. to take into account when creating such images but anyway yours tell some story as well you know yeah, maybe, I, I try maybe to. Yeah, maybe you're talking about enhancing that. Even yeah, more. exactly. Yeah, it, it's something that is really lacking in my paintings, and it's something that I would really like to learn. So it, I think it's really good to talk about someone's weak sides as well, as opposed to something that you're really good at. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, you know, recently I, I I bought something that might help with the organic problems because I bought an Oculus Rift a month ago, and the software like gravity sketch or um or oculus medium allows you to do like super organic stuff very easily and it comes so naturally because it's almost like you're sculpting things for me it's it's easier to sculpt a dragon with my hands like with clay than Mm -hmm. to draw it yeah because because it it feels feels way more intuitive yeah 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 you feel the space because you know i'm used to 3d and i'm used to like doing sculpting classes in art school Mm -hmm. um so I think like trying Oculus Medium and Gravity Sketch will help me a little bit more creating those characters while still staying in my comfort zone of using 3D. Mm-hmm. Oh, so it's you've been a while around 3D and and this stuff, right? Oh yeah, it's actually I started doing 3D before I I, I did 2D. Wow. Yeah. And that's how long ago? Ten that's, years ago? No, it's it's eight years ago. Eight years ago. Cool. Uh, seven. So what, what was your ish. what was your first? software i mean how do you get in how did you get in touch with 3d like yeah um, so that's that's always an interesting story like i i was in commercial design school and i had the most miserable time of my life like literally i think everyone in their life has as like their pitfalls or their like where where they're just feeling bad and like it it shapes you i think as a person yeah, sure. and you learn from Struggle. it so for, <laughs> for me it was that uh that period of time where i was in school and i didn't like it i wanted to be a pro a- athlete you know and, mm-hmm. and it, it was impossible for me of course uh because like if you want to be pro athlete uh it's not gonna happen you know you need to be both lucky you need to have the full support of your parents which which i had of course um you, your body needs to be able to handle it and then you have to, you to have the motivation, and that was something that that was really lacking with me as well, the motivation. So I wasn't that school. I I already like had to do one like year one again. So I was I was in year one for the second year, and then there was this guy, and he said to me like, "Oh, dude, ah, look look at what I'm doing. I have uh, this program, Cinema 4D, and I can do all kinds of abstract shit." And I was like, "Okay, whatever. I'm going back to my video games." And then he said, "No, dude, use it." And I was like, oh, sure, maybe. So you uh, gave it a try. Yeah, so I gave it a try, and I was like, oh, my God. What the fuck is this? Pandora box open. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, it, it, felt like, it felt like building stuff at Legos again. It was so crazy. And, I, I, and that guy made all these abstract um, uh, imagery. But I was like, maybe I can make a spaceship with that. And I, and I, and I did. At least I tried. And of course it sucked. But back then I didn't know there was an industry for this mm-hmm. uh, at all. So the, the the good part for me is that I, I started learning a software w- without having a specific goal in mind, in mind. So I just did it because I thought it was fun. Um, it's interesting that you saw a different application because you say that he was using it for 3D abstract stuff. Yeah. And... Um, you thought about maybe applying that to something different, like a spaceship, like a yeah, building. And of, yeah, exactly. And of course, everyone was doing that, but I didn't know. I didn't even know there was an industry mm-hmm. for that. So so this image I'm showing right now was one of the earlier things I'm, I've made. 
I know it's horrible. Yeah. I was like, I was like seventeen or something. I didn't. Come on, know. dude. Uh, Come on, but, dude. This is cool, man. Thanks. Yeah, it's but it it really you know it really got me started. I mean, but what do you think about yourself when you're looking back at oh, these dude, times? I I loved it. I was like, yo, mom. Look, look at this i made a thank and she was like yeah, whatever dude go find a job yeah and i was like but i am but i i wasn't of course because i didn't know you could turn this into a job and then suddenly like i i bought a walk on because there was another there was a girl in my uh in my course as well and she said oh dude try 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 a walk on and try drawing stuff mm-hmm. I, like, I can't draw stuff but <laughs> so then, yeah huh? go ahead go ahead Oh, sorry. Yeah, but then I, um, I had, I already had these three D renders, and I was like, I do have this tablet now, so maybe I can draw over this three D render to maybe enhance it or maybe uh, paint around it. And and back in the time, of course, everyone was already using paint overs, like uh, doing three D paint overs for the industry. But I found it out um, basically by myself because I, I again, I didn't know there was an industry out there. So I just started experimenting without any goal in mind, without any expectations of, oh, I need to have a job next week, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Um, so I just started improving because because I thought it was fun. And I started posting it on Facebook like, oh, look, I made something stupid. And then people said, yeah, indeed, you made something stupid. Go <laughs> you. Uh, and of course, that, 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 that started improving, improving until I could turn it into a job. Uh, yeah, so I, I actually, I've been doing that same workflow for so long because I I don't have like a traditional art background. I just do it because I thought it was fun and I was just playing around. And that kind of kind of stuck to me. And now I've been using it ever since. Uh and also in, in like a professional uh um, way. Man, it's so cool. Like it, well, I, I would call this a happy accident because oh, you, know, yeah. you just said, Oh, I'm gonna paint over this. Mm-hmm. And this is now your main technique you know like yeah. 3d over paint yeah it's something i definitely wanted to try for a while i just never uh got started on any program i was like overwhelmed by so many names you know mm-hmm. uh, yeah. unlike in your case there was never anyone around me that said yo i have this program you know yeah. this exact program uh-huh. Now, everybody was doing something in 3D. Some use Modo, some use Blender, some use 3D Max. Some yeah, use exactly. Cinema Oof. 4D. So I was like, oh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. Which one do I start with? Yeah. So, it's you know, it, it always comes down to the same thing. Like pick one and have fun. And stick with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So for, for me, it's like uh, like the, the, the less programs you use, the better because it, it gets you more focused. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also it makes you less versatile of course so that, exactly. that's why i have this like very specific style which of which also is a good thing having a, a style that everyone recognizes that's a, that's a good thing if you're looking yeah, for work exactly yeah uh, well yeah. There, there's so many people focusing on creating a style now, yeah you know myself included years ago and then i realized there's no other way than just doing something and that's, style just comes up by itself you exactly know? that's yeah. that's so true you, you hit it right on the on the dot there it, it becomes your style and that's it yeah. and that's what you do and then you will have some people telling you that you know when i see something done by yourself i can tell exactly right away you are the one who did that yeah and you're like what why is that i don't know it has your style and i'm uh-huh. like what's my style <laughs> you know yeah, you, so you can't it see it yeah, it means you do have a style and mm-hmm. that's great like then, then then you're really uh uh getting there and, and like at one point like people start approaching you specifically for what you do and that's the best position ever because definitely you yeah, yeah you get to earn money with the stuff that you really love that's crazy definitely i i highly agree on that yeah and i i wonder how did you you know stumble across this concept art industry like uh, you, you were doing spaceships in 3d and over painting on top of them but yeah how did you find out there is an actual industry industry oh, for this man, i honestly can't can't really remember i i remember like so there was looking. not one single moment right that you I, I yeah i think it gradually started appearing because from commercial design school i went to do art school and that's when i found out like oh dude yeah dude, look at this it's concept art because i had an older classmate who was uh when i was 19 he was already 27 and he had a lot of knowledge of the concept mm, art industry okay like, oh, dude uh, like look at the uh, daniel doshu like for uh guild wars or look at craig mullins what he did for age of empires and i was mm-hmm. like what the fuck 
that's crazy. <laughs> and, and then I and then I found out that you could, uh, yeah, turn this into a job. And that is, uh, yeah, that was a pretty like sweet moment. But I, I have to say, I was so lucky that that guy showed me uh, that the Cinema 4D. I was super lucky because I was like the most unmotivated kid ever back then. Oh. Uh huh. Started from the bottom. Yeah, exactly. And and that's good. Like sometimes you have to like fall on your face to uh, to like get yourself up and see the light or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool, man, cuz you know, back in the days, I only knew that if I go to Google and I type down like concept art and that's it and mm -hmm. I will start I, I Google will will show really pretty paintings and images and that's all I knew about concept art like yeah, concept yeah. art is some sort of different style I don't know like mm -hmm. cool images fantasy sci-fi whatever I didn't even oh, know yeah. it was it was a, a whole industry for this yeah exactly that, that, and that's like a magical moment when you exactly. find, find that right yeah <laughs> oh man years later it all yeah. made sense I'm like oh <laughs> yeah everything clicked you know concept art yeah. of course <laughs> and, and then you probably had the same moment when you went to your first festival like ICC was right mm -hmm. uh, was it last year uh, last year, yeah, 2017. Last year's ICC, yeah. Damn, yeah, that one, that must have been pretty magical. Oh, it was, dude. It was like yeah. I felt I was with because I've never been actually surrounded by by physically, you know, by artists. At yeah, me that neither. level. So when I went there, I was like, I I was feeling like in my own tribe, you know, like meeting, mm -hmm. uh, likewise people with the same interests in. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but you get me. So yeah, and it was it was a really really cool enlightening experience. Exactly. Yeah. Hey. Um. So sh shall I make something in the in the in the meantime? Oh Just man. Like I was I was gonna ask you how do you do oh. these things? Oh. Uh. Yeah. Sure. I mean, uh, I think we can just like talk uh, where we. Yeah. What well, we were just like talking yeah, about, sure. and maybe I'll just like try. Try a bunch of stuff. So I, I wanted to make a sketch. I'll, I'll try to make it in half an hour. And I'm not sure like how long we've been talking right now, but you know, me neither. Must be in, like half an hour. Oh so. yeah, sure. So so we'll we'll see. Um. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to to maybe try and make a temple, like big temple with a kind of a slum city around it. It will mm. be super comfort zony, but at least it shows you the daily workflow. Sounds good. Yeah. So, I'm interested. Yeah, so I, I do have these cities, right, with, with all those buildings scattered around, like, for example, this one. Um, yeah, if you look at the 3D... And I was looking I, at this last night. Yeah, I was wondering, how do you, you know, all those little buildings mm -hmm. right there. Like, did you make uh, all of them separately? Like, you, you do one and you create variations of it, or...? Yeah, like well, yeah, it, it's something that's called the Octane Scatter Tool. And, uh, yeah, it's something that, that, um, that Octane does. So it's all uh, the same building? No, it's. I actually have these. Those are like a bunch of buildings. I don't know. I think there's like four different buildings. And what I can do is, for example, if I, I have the octane scatter here, like on the top right, and I, um, as a surface, I put in this plane. So if I would drag in all of my building objects into that um, octane scatter, it now scatters it all over, see? Mm. Yeah. So and that's really interesting. You can you can adjust the count. I can like make ten thousand, and I can also I can also like vary the building. So maybe put a randomizer on there uh, to effectors, and now you see the buildings are moving a little bit. And I can vary the scale, for example. So let's put it on this. So see now the buildings have a, have a different um, yeah like scale. I can rotate them. A little bit see now now it's even Ew, more messy that's so cool so, so how, how did you how did you tell the program to only place these buildings in the certain areas you wanted like on the the coastline you know is, is there like a paintbrush or something you can paint these oh things over? um so yeah so what i did with that other model is uh let me let me jump back into it um uh what i just made i i made i just modeled the surface so I modeled that cir circular surface uh, that goes around that little coast uh, thing, and it has oh, multiple right. levels, like a balcony. And then I and then I told the program, "Yo, I need I need you to scatter these buildings across that surface that I just made." So you just like like you have a plane. So for example, if I have a cube and I want that to be the surface, let me make it bigger. 
I just go to the octane scatter and drag the oh wait uh, to distrib distribution and I drag the cube into the surface. So now see the buildings scatter over the cube. Mm, now it makes sense. All right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. and that's and that's actually that's so easy to do. Um, so I wanted to make something with that. Uh, I'm not really sure uh, what yet, but we'll see. And um, the most important thing is I'll try to keep my program from crashing. Uh, oh, that's right. that's yeah. always interesting. So <laughs> now I'm starting to be a little bit worried as well. No, no, it will be you fine. You told me so, before. Yeah, GPU usage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but like for you, it, it won't matter, of course. Um, so I, I just, I'll just like make a bit of a random plane here, because I, I want the city to have a little bit of an irregular feel, uh, because I'm planning to make kind of a desolate, maybe desert scene. Um, I'll probably paint a texture for it as well in Photoshop, just in a in a little bit to to actually create the desert. It's really hard to see now the plane, so I'll put on the lines. Oh, it's even hard to see right now. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so, cool, we have this surface. So I'm going to tell Octane to, first I'm going to copy it because I want to create a Boolean out of it as well. And I'm going to tell Octane, yo, Octane, scatter this. And, <laughs> it, and now it, it just scattered it. And we still have that randomizer that we just had. But I'm going to make it just a little bit more random by varying the, um, the position. So now the buildings go a little bit outside of the borders that I, I just um, defined. So, and you can vary anything in those little yeah, buildings, right? Like the scale and, and... Anything. Oh anything, God. Adrian. <laughs> Where are those textures from? Oh, uh, super easy. Like just flat colors. There's oh, a... Uh, flat colors. And, and there's one like rock texture that is obviously not showing for some reason. Uh, <laughs> I, I had a brick texture, but it doesn't matter because like it, it's only about the color. I think if, I, if I'm going to paint over this, I'm going to do it s probably in black and white very quickly. So let me copy this, like make it bigger and then uh, extrude it real quick so we can use it as a Boolean because I want, um, let me see. That's not, that's not good. Uh, did, what anyone, I, did anyone tell you you should make a lot of tutorials already? Uh, yeah, they did, but <laughs> I, and I and I really want to, but it's for me it's so hard to find out the um, the technical aspect of creating tutorials. Like, where do I start? How do I record my stuff? Hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I think it might be. I mean, I'm still working on that stupid Gumroad, and and I really should. Uh, but somehow something is stopping me and I don't know what it is. But I, I think very soon I will take some time off to really try and develop mm -hmm. something that might be useful. I think you would have a lot of people interested in this. Oh, that, yeah. I mean, that would be that would be fantastic if that would be the case. Uh, because for, for Cityscapes, it's I feel it's really great. I'll, I'll be showing some other tool, the, um, the displacement tool, which is also really great for, for concept art. Because you yeah create so much like variety and you can create insanely detailed surfaces um, by just the click of a button. I will show that momentarily. I'm almost done here. I'm I'm just going to make this surface more irregular. Like uh, it, this is called the brush tool, mm. and you can use it to basically I don't know display some of the polygons here. So make it. Yeah, I was going to ask you because I I don't know. I think I've never seen anything like being able to how should i call this like um carve into mm, the, yeah, the, yeah yeah the mesh like this uh -huh. in such a hard surface program so yeah, yeah it's, it, what was the name again oh it's it's called the brush tool and uh brush in, tool, in, in, that's in it? and you can modify like the vert vertices and... yeah 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 it's really easy i can mm. uh i can just go to the brush tool and i can say maybe like Twist, uh, twist the polygons around. See now, mm. now you have like this twister effect. I should make yeah, it now. It seems clearer. like now it seems like a sculpting tool, like yeah, a sculpt, sculpting yeah. program. It's like a very simple sculpting tool. And of course, the more polygons you have, the more there is to actually displace. But mm -hmm. you know how that goes. So um, I, I, I really like this lighting already because there's there's some kind of like lines going right. So let me let me adjust the lighting real quick so we can create something. That looks remote. Oh, and the cool. lighting thing that Octane has is so amazing because yeah. you know, in other programs you have to 
uh, make sure the the color is right. If you if you want to make a sunset light, for instance, you mm-hmm. have to make the the color, the intensity, and here you just you know twist that thing around and, <laughs> and that's yeah, it. it's and it's pretty go. crazy. So I want more variety within the buildings, but I do like that that there are so many buildings right now. So let's ju- let's just keep that in. So the idea was that I want basically the story I'm thinking of now is that there's a giant temple like ancient temple. And then there is a whole civilization of people who built basically around that temple, like in the middle of the desert to, uh, to kind of worship this being or, or, Mm. you know, whatever. Uh, I'm going to place it in the middle. uh, Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to place it in the middle, but first I want to, to create some kind of, how do you call it? Like a gutter or something like something that, Oh, I'm still in the twister. So let, let me put it back on smear. Some kind of line that's leading towards the city. So I need to adjust this plane, make it a little bit bigger. So I can maybe we can maybe even create a river or an oasis. So I'm pretty sure we won't have time to create like a full-on painting. But what I will do is maybe like finish this later. Mm-hmm. Um, and for now, we can just keep it at a black and white sketch. So I need to save this. Let me. I'll just save it on my desktop. I would just call it temple because I'm lazy. Uh, Dude, so- since you started years ago on this. Um, did you follow like tutorials every now and then, or you just went nuts on the program and, and uh, messed up with everything? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I did a lot of Cinema 4D tutorials, but since Cinema 4D is kind of a motion graphics software, uh, it's hard to find tutorials that are catered towards uh, concept art. So I, I had to find most of it out myself, and most of it, of course, from like other artists using it, Ash Thorpe. Uh, uh paul shady song like p- mm-hmm. people like that um but a lot of it is just playing around so something i will show now is the cloner um which is exactly that it clones the the, pro- the object you're putting in it just clones that around so see i already have three of them i can make millions of them if i want to and then just like that octane scatter tool you can tell them what happens with each step so if i wanted to rotate 90 degrees it, it does just that. And if I want it to become maybe bigger uh, over a certain axis, I can tell, yeah, tell it to do that. So see, now we have like an inverted pyramid going on. Damn. Um, so it's it's really In fast. In a matter of seconds. In a matter of seconds, and exactly. And you, and you can just use it to keep experimenting and keep adding to your story. Uh, like, why is that pyramid inverted? It, it will... I probably won't make it as ridiculous as this. Uh, it will probably be small, smaller. And then let's up the steps. Because I was thinking about maybe making some terraced buildings. And then I want some buildings on, on that cloner there as well. Uh, so that might be interesting. I, I'm not sure how I'm going to solve that. But let's see. So I, I want to have like... Because the, um, the city is located in this desert kind of on a low position. And I want the temple to be on the same height of the desert. So people can actually walk into the temple and then the city is below that in the shadow of the temple. So something like this might be really cool. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it. (laughs) And then (laughs) just in case. (laughs) And then create another uh, scatter. And then I'm going to just collapse my cloner and select some of the surfaces. Because now I want to clone, uh, I mean, I want to scatter some buildings along Mm -hmm. on the surface that i have right now and now i have a bunch of polygons and i'm just going to grow the selection by pressing a hotkey u y um so now it It takes like uh, surrounding polygons yeah it it just selects the surrounding polygons and and basically grows your selection like this now i'm going to copy that and then press ui ui to invert the selection and now i i have this surface and now I'm going to use this surface to scatter buildings on top of uh, by just like selecting that octane scatter again and then putting that cloner in. See, now we have more buildings. Oh, man, what? I'm freaking this, out, dude. This is so messy, though. This is so messy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. What a uh, huge city you just created in a matter yeah, of in, Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and th- this is a, like, a really rewarding workflow to work with. Oh yeah, um, it's definitely it, it's it's cool because it follows the shape, whatever shape you you put in there. Uh-huh. So you don't have to place every single little building separately. Yeah, exactly. 
this uh, is something they might use on on video games as well on game engines you ooh, know, to create towns villages sure i think i think a lot of them use houdini right now mm-hmm. because they have like a lot uh, like better maybe yeah. options to instance what was stuff? the name for that like like p- parametric no 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 yeah um, parametric design it's what it's called i think like where you would start with one object procedural and then... Oh, Isn't procedure! That? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah parametric that, that is, is parametric is almost the same. Uh, where where you start with one model and like mm-hmm. instance it and like yeah uh, change and the source the model future. to create exactly to create all kinds of weird stuff. So I do need to change this randomizer because now the buildings are going over the surface. Uh, so basically, the buildings are floating in space, which we don't want. We want to be confined to that surface so all right there we go and now we just need a big building and then we're all set uh so where's this cloner here i want to copy it one more time Uh uh-oh big building and coming yeah ready guys so so, uh (laughs) just like this and maybe make it a bit smaller so we have like a base for the building all right and uh, that should do it you know, but and, and for for showing it to clients, it's really it's really easy. Like because when a client says, "Ah, oh, yo, you know, I want a city. It's in a desert, and there's a temple, and there's a river, and there's stupid stuff, and there's people," <laughs> and then you're like, "Oh, I'm so overwhelmed with what does that guy want?" Yeah. Uh, but then you just use the tools that that are available to you, and you. Uh, so what do you do? You usually create like several models like this scene, yeah. or where you just take different screenshots that may make it look different from mm, every angle. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, something what I usually do, I just start modeling and just say, yeah, what, what about this? And then mm-hmm. you make a bunch of different renders and, and just check in with the clients, like, if, if that's what they want. And usually it isn't what they want. And then you just keep continuing. For example, that, that painting I was showing, like this one, it took, like, 20 iterations because, like, oh, they wanted the, the crater to be slightly different. You know, they wanted the mountains to be a bit higher. Mm-hmm. So you keep, like, adding. But because you're still in 3D, you haven't, like, spent hours and hours to create, like, beautiful yeah, paintings. exactly. That you, yeah, that you now have to, you know, like, just start over because, like, the client wanted something different. Well, it's nice for me to say this because there's a lot of people that think that, you know, everything comes in the first shot. You know, yeah, you you got it all at first attempt. Oh, it's and... not true. I, I wish I, I <laughs> yeah. wish, but that's not how it works, you know. And mm-hmm. and in the end, you're you're happier, I I guess, because you changed that. And and yeah, you know, to be honest, like especially when I work for clients, the more steps it takes for me to to get it right, the better the image will become. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because, and and I find that out with my own work as well. Like if I go too fast, if I create something. In like a in half a day, then it 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 is like you could sell it, but it's it's not as good as mm. as when you would like really focus on it and really focus on the design. Yeah, it's like a sort of a little pain you have to go through in order to get yeah. to the bigger deal. Later. Exactly. So uh, and you know it's worthy, so you just mm-hmm. go ahead and do it. But so, yeah, you know, I this is a little bit off topic now, but uh what you said before that you weren't really motivated in in school and and Uh so on um i wonder if you had some sort of down moments uh now that you're a professional working like uh in terms of you know unmotivation uh to be honest art art blocks and stuff yeah how do you i i have them all the time now uh i I used to not have them as much because i i was my workflow was so well defined that i could like throw out images even even when I f- didn't feel like it, but now I feel that I, I should really improve my um, you know my style and my my stuff. So now I'm feeling you know a little bit like eh, I, I really mm-hmm. should like maybe take some time off to to yeah to do some personal stuff. So that's what I have right now. But I you know I I have like an art book every every two months every month. Uh, and it's it's usually followed by like a very good period where you just like keep creating stuff and everything is kind of good and you know you get work uh, over and over. Uh, but now uh, at this moment, I I do feel like I, I should really like get up and uh, and like improve. Yeah, something uh, that I think really helps is to check your own progress. You know that mm-hmm. if you track your own progress, which is something. Um, we fortunately have everywhere because we are posting online on everywhere, you know, our station yeah. and sites like these. But if you just go three years back and you check 
where you're coming from, you will definitely feel more like, oh man, I got much better than than when I was there. Then yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, I got to keep it this way. Yeah, it's very true. Uh, yeah, but it, I mean, it, it's it's still sometimes hard, like especially when you're dealing with with work that it's like a bit hard and like eh, you you just can't get into yeah. it. Mm-hmm. So so just like really quick, what I'm doing now is I'm using the displacement maps, and what that is is like you're using a black and white texture to, you know, change your surface. Uh, like, yeah. So oh, this just, is what what adds the detail. Yeah. The, exactly. Uh, right. So what I'm doing now, I, I have a whole folder of displacement maps that I made myself. Um, um, if I, I was going to ask you, you created them yourself. Yeah, yeah. So all of them are created uh, by myself. I know there's a lot of resources out there of people that are just giving them away for free. Hmm. Uh, but I How like do you make uh, those in Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, just in Photoshop. Uh, if I can, I open this like like this. So this is super easy, mm-hmm. right? It's just cubes in Photoshop. Yeah. But if I if I use this as a displacement map, um, you and then uh, throw this texture onto the object, you can instantly see what happens. Uh, but not not yet because I have to increase the height. So see, you can see my octane mm-hmm. like thinking. And now, if we look at it, now we suddenly have an insane amount of detail. Oh wow! <laughs> so that's that's Magic. pretty neat. Yeah, it 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 slows my octane down really really badly, but it's okay. Um, so see now, based on that texture, my whole whoa, what the fuck? That's that's not good. Uh, <laughs> my whole object got changed, and I I I, I realize now that my uh, my scene is too big in terms of scale. That's why my um, machine has problems. But but now you can see what happens. See now it's kind yeah, of yeah, I see it. Holy. What? Because yeah, we have we just have these cubes here, mm-hmm. but in the render it looks like very detailed. Yeah, 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 they don't show up in because they're like particles. No, 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 no. Particles is something entirely different. But oh, okay. um, but uh, what it does like it changes. Oh yeah, uh, I think Octane renders based on voxels instead of polygons. So what it does, it also it alters the surface. Um, but but you assign that in your texture. So basically oh. my displacer is here, like it's hidden in my texture. So yeah. whenever I drop a texture onto a model, the displacer tells it to actually, yeah, displace the, the polygons. So now it's it's only a matter of finding a nice uh, lighting solution. And maybe like, where's that plane that I had there? So ma- making that a little bit bigger so it stretches over the horizon. Um, yeah, this is limitless. Whoa. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't, can, I can't stop freaking out, dude. It's, it's yeah, it's you've pretty, been it's here pretty... for for a few minutes, and you already have like a decent base to work with. You know, take some screenshots, and there you go. Exactly, you know? and you can already show this to clients. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so normally, like, I would have to, I I would have to make those little buildings myself. I mean, the, these are made myself as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, in, in, like for this interview, uh, I just used whatever was available to me to speed up the process yeah. because it wasn't interesting. Like the rest, the rest was just, uh, like regular polygon modeling stuff. And now that we hear, can you still apply textures to those little buildings you created with the normal maps or what was it? Displacement map? Yeah, yeah, sure. Like if I, uh, if I throw a texture on top of this, cause like may- I thought that if they're not actual polygons, you could not use textures on them mm, no you can uh, it, it might so now it's glass mm-hmm. for example it's this is super odd uh so now it glows a little bit so n- now we suddenly have this giant alien monolith structure yeah um but uh, of course you can you can apply a- any texture that you you would like like for example we can we can try something which i don't know if that will work but i'll, I'll just create a new shader oh and- wait a second because i think i was I, I was confused. I thought textures meant like, you know, images, like, I don't know, 1K right. resolution images. Oh, but you can still but do it. What you did on the, the little houses down there was to just uh, create a material, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's just give it a flat color. Uh-huh. Okay. That's what you're doing here as well. Yeah. So, okay. but if I, so let's let's just color this uh, this desert, you know. Now, now it looks odd. Now it looks even worse. So I have to like. Because of the tiling. Red- 
Yeah, mm -hmm. so I have to put it way higher on zero point, oh, even even less, zero point zero zero one. Then put this one on zero point zero one. All right, so now we have a, a texture that already helps us. Like, uh, you know, we already have some information down. Now this so, is looking good. So let's alter my um, original displacement texture and color the other surfaces that I have to that also that grayish material. And now we can just render render it and render it uh, like finish it in Photoshop. Probably I'll probably finish it in black and white. I, and I, maybe... I saw I saw you did something in VR like um, sort of a color travel building. In, oh yeah. Um, what was it? Gravity sketch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how's, how's that going? Like uh, VR, <laughs> VR is something I only tried once, and mm -hmm. it was for twenty minutes, and it was Oculus Medium. So oh, I okay. never tried get Gravity Sketch, but it's really it's so much fun, especially like for me uh, because I'm used to, to creating architecture. It's great for creating just that uh, this very like, modern uh, kind of architecture with those cool arches. Let me let me. Yeah, hmm? do do you import those models here into Cinema or? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. You never do standalone octane, right? No, no, I, that's too hard for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> node, node power. Exactly. Uh, I mean, uh, let me, let me, let me see. I do have this model somewhere here. I have to open it up, and it's it's probably in a cloner, so I'm just going to copy it. Oh yeah, I see. All right. Um, let's let's disable all those cloners. Real quick. And then just, what the hell did I do with this model? I, I need to delete everything except for the thing I made. So, so it, it becomes more clear. Yeah, you created that thing and you, yeah, this, this thing you was, multiplied it several yeah. times. Yeah, exactly. So I multiplied in Cinema 4D to create like a, a very interesting structure. But the original thing was looking uh, like this. I, I need to put a light on it. So like yeah. this. Uh, so Whoa. this was all this was all made in Gravity Sketch, and it's it's really cool for creating like this modern architecture type of like arches and. Yeah, one thing I saw stuff. was that it make you it makes you feel like nothing has to be so tight, at least as tight in, as in a three um, D program. You know, like every vertex has mm -hmm. to you know match the next one, and this is more like hand drawn you know yeah. it's like you don't have to worry about anything exactly just, and, and the thing is that in gravity sketch i think mm -hmm. uh, you can take every single uh, stroke and move it around yeah whenever you want yeah that's that's really that's really awesome i love the like sketchy feeling to it and you know what it doesn't matter if if your model is a little bit irregular because uh you'll paint over it anyway right yeah. So right. you you will hide any mistakes you you've made in 3D. You'll hide it uh, when you paint over it in Photoshop. So like that's that's never an issue, and that's why gravity is so great at this at this moment for concept art, uh, because it allows you to be really messy and and still get like the really nice results. Um, yeah. So so for me so for me it's fantastic because like. Even though I've been using modeling tools for so long, I'm still very crappy at it. Like I could, I could never make like a car, for example, a detailed car. Mm -hmm. That would be very hard for me because I, I never learned the proper modeling tools. I, ju I just use like the tricks. Yeah, uh, you have to, to get worry results. about the wireframe. And, yeah, yeah. You know. So yeah, I just use whatever is available to me to get results very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so l let me just render this real quick, and, and and I can throw it into Photoshop, and I can maybe show you a few few tools that I use in Photoshop. Yeah, sure. Uh, before before we wrap this up, how um, how long do you think it takes you to you know first in in terms of percentages, more like uh, how much time do you spend in three D and then in two D to finish the piece? Like yeah, 60, that, 40 percent. Oh, or that's 80, always 20? interesting. Yeah, that varies. That varies a lot on the project. Like a sometimes. Lot? Uh, yeah, really a lot. So because let me let me check let me show this picture. Uh, mm -hmm. I have this image somewhere. Where the where the heck is it? I don't <laughs> know. Jeez, I don't know where it is. Oh, there it is. So this this image was almost entirely done in three D. 
and only a minor minor stuff made in 2D. So this is what it looks like in 3D. So see, there's a lot of information already. And basically, you just have to like add a few minor details. Even that structure, by mm -hmm. the way, was added in, in, in 3D as well, but I didn't include it in this shot for some stupid reason. So how I did this is I took a, um, like an aerial shot of a city and I copied it around like 10 times and used that as a height map, as a displacement map Ooh. to create like the height variation in those buildings. Genius. So, so now you already have a gigantic city. Mm -hmm. It's ginormous, as a uh, fucking president would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's the best. Um, so now you only have to add a few minor details and you're done. So basically here, this is about 70% 3D, 30% 2D. And then there's also some images that are the other way around. They're, they're like 30% in, in, uh, in 3D and like 70% in 3D. Uh, so example, this one, this this one for Kitbash, which like anyone, if, if you don't, don't know Kitbash yet, check it out. It's amazing. It's an amazing tool for- Yeah, I, I, I know, man. Uh, it's incredible what they did with this. Uh -huh. I mean, I know Max, and he's a great guy. And he I, is, I was uh, always talking to him about this, and he was so proud of everything about, mm -hmm. you know, all it's, of this yeah, and the way, the way people welcomed it. And I see you guys making covers for them, and it's so It's, it's so, so awesome. inspiring. It's always so cool that, that, that we get the opportunity to, to do that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. like to create those kind of covers. It's, it's really, really rewarding. Sorry, I burped. <laughs> I just woke up. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so it's I'll fine, just, dude. I'll don't worry. This. Yeah, it's a so, Friday but, morning. Uh, so, for example, like the kit, the, those kit bash sets. Instead of making those buildings yourself, you can just use the kit bash for it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I just see now. I, I have a problem with something. I don't like the rotation on these buildings. So I'm. I want to. I want the city to be more geometrical. So to do that, I'll just jump back into that um, randomizer and just put the rotation back on zero. Mm -hmm. So now my buildings are straight. And do you always do like a like a test render before, you know, I mean, why if you have a live view right there, mm -hmm. why don't you just zoom in and, and look at it? Yeah, 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 I, I, I do. Uh, I do that a lot of the times, but sometimes... Um, There's stuff you can't see there, maybe. Yeah, because this render is in 4K, so it, you, you spot oh, mistakes right. more easily that way. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, yeah. Uh-huh. So now, you know, we, we already have a ton of information and this will take like probably two minutes, maybe to render, maybe a bit more. Maybe I'll just like stop the render halfway and paint over what we have. Doesn't like, doesn't matter at all. You know yeah. what? I'll, uh -huh. I'll just save it, um, for the, uh, you know, just for, just for the heck of it. Um, right. And do, do you think you could do something like this in, in VR, uh, like, like, like this kind of buildings, like this kind of composition? Man. Do you um, know, you, I think I think you could do it in uh, in um, Oculus Medium, but uh, it will give you an insane amount of polygons. So it will be um, a little bit more hard to work with. Mm -hmm. But uh, for example, if you would create just a few buildings in um, in uh, what's it called in Gravity Sketch, and then import them into Photoshop, and then use that as your uh, you know for your scattering tool. Uh, then, then it will work. Then it will work just fine. Like you, you create like a bunch of buildings. Mm -hmm. um, but I tried to create a little town in uh, into in medium. But I, let, let me see if I can find it really quickly. Uh, sure. Yeah, I was asking you in case it feels way more comfortable to make it in VR uh, mm -hmm. because of the you know the way you build it actually with your own hands <laughs> yeah 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 um, it, it feels yeah modeling feels like way more organic and, and way nicer in, in vr yeah but then uh, the thing you said about the the density or the resolution or whatever that is the polygon thingy yeah um, that's another problem because they use voxels right there's not only polygons in the surface uh -huh. it's actual voxels that, um, they, they're well, stuffed yeah, but but if you're if you import it into uh, 3D, then it's um, oh, it then they convert it into surface. polygons. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like this, so a scene like this, this is all modeled in in, in uh, medium. Mm -hmm. uh, but imported into into uh, Cinema 4D, it was a little bit harder to handle because it was so many polygons. Uh, and also, I wasn't able to create a cool image of it because I was going so crazy. I, I think I spent a day. I, I I spent about six hours straight in VR creating this. 
like it was crazy like i was so confused when i got back out um but of course in vr it worked because i, I could like turn around in the city but i because i was so crazy about creating the structures i forgot about composition uh so that's why i wasn't able to turn it into a proper image so i i had to throw it away but i was really happy like with the amount i learned uh with that day of uh yeah doing vr stuff mm -hmm. like all those boats are made in vr all those buildings like the big building oh man you can always use those things i mean you can always go exactly. back to this piece and, and yeah. use it some somehow uh -huh. so so basically what i'm trying to say you you can make anything you want anything it, it doesn't matter like spaceships buildings cities it's uh yeah it's, it doesn't matter so let's jump back into this this little well, right. wait but I, I sorry i totally forgot about your initial question about like polygons and what you were uh what you were asking initially no it was it was um it was related to the density of oh yeah i yeah, don't yeah. know how you said it uh, oh yeah but, so oh yeah yeah i know yeah it yeah, was so it was vr uh, against uh making i mean making this in in cinema for d yeah. against making it so, in, in vr exactly so for cityscapes i would still use cinema for d definitely mm -hmm. performance uh, wise i mean perf well performance wise and also i wouldn't be able to make this cityscape in vr i did it's too complex i think mm -hmm. it would it would get crazy way too fast um but you know you could you could like like i said you could create the separate buildings and then import them into cinema 3 and then create a city because like octane has that scattering tool but vr doesn't have that so but what what oculus medium has is it has the um, the clone stamp tool right in which you could uh, can turn your shapes or your like buildings into stamps so basically you create one building and then you can copy it all over your scene and that way you can create a cityscapes uh, a cityscape very fast but it's still not as fast as doing it in um in octane with the scatter tool that i just showed ah now that i remember that's something yeah. i saw finian do in yeah 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 London. that was that was so amazing he was making one thing and like he did like a rock or something and then you yeah. can add it to to your library to your as well. library yeah and it's beautiful like you you just copy it all <laughs> over and uh, yeah you basically you it's like Photoshop, like you make custom brushes, but then it's actual 3D. And that, that stuff is so rewarding. I've been trying it, like creating one plant and then populating an entire scene with that. That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just going to try and create a like, a like a tower here to create a very quick focal point. So let's just say like this civilization was built around like a giant alien spaceship. I, I don't know. Like it crashed over there? Yeah, it crashed over there. Like I know I, I've done this many times before, but it's it's really comfort zone and it's really nice to, to just show this. So yeah, in man. terms of for comfort clients, things are always for good. clients. <laughs> uh, you know, we just have to paint over this for ten minutes, mm -hmm. um, and then it's already like done to to show it to a potential client. Like, oh, this is what it looks like. This is what it could be. Maybe the building looks like this, or maybe it it it's more organic like this. You know, maybe maybe it's like a winding structure. But then if we think about shape language, everything is so square already yeah. in, um, in in this image that if, if I would make a, a winding building like this, it would look very weird, right? Yeah. It would look very out of place there. So that's something that we, we need to keep in mind as well. So instead of that, you know, the desert is very organic. So what I'm going to do is create round shapes in the desert uh, to contrast those um oh yeah that's a good idea. so it embraces yeah. the the, yeah. the city yeah uh -huh. so yeah so to contrast those square, square so what if what city. if what if the client says for instance oh yeah we like this one and it's something that you painted over uh, uh -huh. you, you have to go back and model it right or yeah sometimes or, or sometimes mean, like if it, if it's something i painted over in 15 minutes it's like no work at all to to do it in the final image mm-hmm Right, so if they say like, "Oh, we like these small towers," I mean, I could add it in three D, um, but also it, it since since the three D is never the end result; it's just like a means to an end. Yeah, I can just I can just add it in into Photoshop. Yeah, I was I was no because I was wondering like, what if I make a cool complex shape uh, in Photoshop? 
And then、mm-hmm. they agree on that one and they say, Oh, we love this one. And、yep. I'm like, Oh shit, now I have to make it in 3D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that, can, that can be pretty hard. So you, you need to think about what, what, what you're showing your clients and what you're not showing. <laughs> and so, I mean, sometimes, like, of course, when you're showing something to your client, you, you, you want them to pick the one that you like the most as well. Yeah. So it's so very just, important the way you present it. Exactly, yeah. So sometimes you just spend a little bit more time on、uh, on, on this or that, or it 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 really depends.、Uh, sorry, something someone called Imke. What's that? Oh, all right. <laughs> sorry about that. that no was, problem. That my, they were my downstairs neighbors. Don't worry, dude. So,、uh, how much time do we still have left?、Uh, we've been here for one hour. Oh, one hour. I mean, we can uh, we can uh, just keep going for a little bit, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's fun. Are you, no are you having fun? I'm having fun. Oh, man, I'm having so much fun. And I, I bet the audience is having <laughs> a lot of fun as well. Ah, you、it's, know, I, I hope to. I hope.、Uh, come on, we'll dude. This is really、goes. interesting. And it, I, I've always wondered how you do these things.、Mm-hmm. And they're yeah, turning、I'll、out just... pretty great. Now, you're, you're, let's say you're taking care of the values. Yeah, and... yeah, a little bit. And just, just adding some minor information, like wh-、mm. what's the material that those.、Uh, yeah, I saw you added like highlights to create more contrast.、Uh-huh. That's so cool. Yeah, we, we could maybe create some pathways. Are you always、yeah. using Mixer Brush? I love Mixer Brush. I, I don't know why. It just like, I, I started using it, and there was probably someone who told me, like, oh, dude, dude Leon, use this Mixer Brush. I was like, ah, no.、Mm-hmm. And I did it, and I was like, I never using anything else anymore. <laughs>、uh, it, it, I love the gritty feeling it gives. And,、uh, and what I especially love is、uh, the fact that you can basically paint using the information that's already into your painting. So, because the downside of 3D is that now I'm stuck with so many hard edges, but, which is cool. Yeah. But sometimes、uh, you have to lose them a little bit. Yeah, you have to lose them. So, what if we would keep the hard edges that are right here? And what if we loosen up just the rest of the painting? Exactly.、So、what I do, I just sample bits and pieces of my city and use them as a brush. So, like, I sample this roof there. That and- was a question、I'm, I was going to ask you because I see you're using it in a way I, I'm not. <laughs> so,、yeah. the, the, the way I'm using Mixer Brush currently、yeah. is as a smudge tool. You know,、oh, like、okay. I, I, I take. Uh, whatever brush I want, and I select the mixer brush tool、mm-hmm. and I just smudge some stuff around, and that's it. But I see you're painting with color, I mean, color, you're with values currently,、yeah. and you're even sampling parts of the image.、Um, do you do this like all the time? I、all、see you're、time. switching between mixer brush and normal brush, yeah. I, I honestly do it、uh, I do it a lot. And maybe that's like, maybe that's a bad thing as well. Like, I, I, I just really like the mixer brush and, and what it does. No, but it creates some detail, you know,、uh-huh. like in the, in the smudged areas, you still have like the sample image, but、yeah. a little bit smudged, you know? So, yeah, it, exactly. It works. So, for example, if I, if I want to create like a pathway that leads up to, to the inner city, so maybe uh, uh, people are approaching the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, from this like, giant surface.、Uh, I, I want to make some trees that, that go along the path. So let me just quickly do that. Some trees, some trees, some trees. And then the only thing we have to do is match the lighting we already have、uh, from our 3D. So let's see where the lighting came from because I, I honestly forgot. <laughs>、um, let's see. Seems to be coming from the back yeah, yeah. right of the camera. Yeah, somewhere around because、I、of the, it, the middle building, I guess. Oh, yeah, I guess it does. So, so what that means is that the lighting on my tower is off, right? I, I so I think the lighting should be hitting here. Yeah, when these things happen, I always tend to think that, that there must be a cloud or something covering、mm-hmm. that area, and that's、yeah. why you don't have light there. Uh, wait a second, do I? Oh man, I, <laughs> I should have looked at this. Oh, I see now, <laughs> I see now. The lighting, the lighting actually comes from. Almost exactly behind the structure. So, like, oh, let me, let me just draw an arrow like this. That's a, that's a bad arrow.、Um, yeah, like this. So, the shadows need、mm-hmm. to. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm so stupid. So, you point them again to the center of the image. Yeah. So, I, I think it's something like this. I mean, it doesn't really matter right now since we're sketching and 
it's not really noticeable. But if mm. if we want to paint in little details like trees, we have to keep in mind where our where our um, uh, sun is coming from. So let's yeah, those see. those subtle things are so yeah important. That, you know, like the way you point the attention of the the viewer to uh -huh. the, to your selling point uh, through let's say light with yeah. you know uh, lines of light like mm -hmm. what you did down here with these little trees and i mean the path itself you know it's yeah. taking you to the center yeah and same same with the other ones you, you have like four right and this mm -hmm. this one on the on the left side it doesn't need as much because yeah. it's like kind of off the focal point so you don't need exactly it. exactly so uh, and, and yeah, and exactly. We we can use this information to to draw to draw the viewer in. Maybe we can highlight even this walkway a little bit more, so people are instantly like, "Oh, where's that tree line going?" And let me let me just grab a like a reddish brush. So um, yeah. Well, by the way, thanks for letting me feel important talking about composition stuff. Cause I I feel like I'm lacking a lot of knowledge on it. So oh I'm, no, I'm, but it's great. But what you're saying makes like all the sense in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm um, trying to practice it a lot with yeah. thumbnails uh -huh. especially thumbnails they help a lot i guess in yeah my, oh of in my course opinion. yeah it's perfect it's really good to break down your image in mm -hmm. uh into like smaller steps oh in so fact that's that's how i think i saw you start your one of your latest images which uh -huh. i think is not done yet uh there in london you were mm -hmm. just sketching little thumbnails oh yeah that's right in your schedule on your sketchbook yeah so by the way, I'm I'm extending the canvas because I now noticed that the tower was almost in the middle. Mm -hmm. I don't want that, so I'm I'm just going to make it more of a wide overview shot. And yeah. with the mixer brush, I'll I'll just like draw the information back in. Oh, what and, do you think and, about the rule of thirds? Like, um, I always tend to, you know, I I it, I it almost got to a point where I was obsessed with it. Like, oh, oh my yeah. god, I'm I'm this is centered. Uh, <laughs> you know, I got to make something. So I mean, I, it, but I I saw people that are against it like oh you don't need it like there's yeah. no rule for composition actually you can do whatever uh, you know you want. there's a lot of people that say like uh, rules are meant are meant to be broken to be broken i yeah. think when you're presenting stuff to a client and you need to be really fast then it's still it's still a really solid way to to set up your image right mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be your final composition but if if we are on a tight schedule if if we have like an hour for an interview like this I of course I would do a composition that is very easy and very recognizable. So uh, with you know you have those leading lines to the tower, you have this little city happening around there, you have the desert, mm -hmm. almost almost like creating a spiral that, that that drags you into the image. Yeah, whatever uh, works. So, if it if it looks good, then it's yeah. Good. <laughs> so I, I the role of thirds, especially for for client work or if you're working on a tight schedule, is really really like a good guideline to mm -hmm. yeah to to get you going and to create good images like i think if you're making personal stuff you could definitely ignore it um it dep depends on what you want to learn like if you if you want to learn storytelling like sometimes composition might be important uh because of like leading lines or so that characters pointing towards the thing so it must be about the thing yeah then there's another thing there and what's that doing um uh, but sometimes you you're just like focusing on like architectural visualization or just rendering or just like you're making an abstract image then you can just like disregard composition but for me it's still a very solid tool because you know i i'm not that experienced in the industry like i i've been freelancing for two years or something like that so i i've not been doing it that long so for me it's still it's still a guideline that that really um yeah, it really helps me in, in, in my day-to-day -day workflow. Now that you said this, um, what was your first job like? You know, your first professional gig? First Probably time horrible. You, yeah? You, you didn't like it? Um, you know what? Uh, like, once you once you get going and once you get a lot of clients, it's it's easier to say no to, uh, to clients. And mm -hmm. it's a bit more easy to take the jobs that you actually want to to work on so uh -huh. my first clients were a little bit i you know i honestly can't even remember because i i had i had clients when i was still in school so i i have been professionally freelancing for two to three years but uh i've been doing little assignments for probably over four um but you know what so I, you, I, you started freelance directly or or yeah. you, you got an in-house thing first 
No, I I started freelance. I I, I realize I I know now what my first freelance job was like. I ended up quitting because I didn't like it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because uh, it was a mo- it was a modeling job and it just didn't work. Mm-hmm. Like I had to model like a spaceship interior and I wasn't experienced enough to do that. And they of course didn't have a budget, so you know things didn't go as well. But it was it, it was concept related or yeah, it was like know... concept modeling. F- okay, ish. I thought concept. it was a final model or something. You know, I honestly can't remember. Uh, it it might have been a final model, and that's that's why I wasn't able to do it because I, I'm not that good a modeler. But I also did like jobs where I, where I went in house for like a week and did did a ton of concepts, and then I en- ended up quitting because the demands were so ridiculous. Um, yes, you you know you have to f- like kind of suck at some point or kind of fall flat on your face to yeah, get if it's the want. only thing available i guess yeah i mean i i got scammed like uh, probably two or three times from for money like oh, when doing fuck. freelance work but i mean it sucks and it mm-hmm. costs you like a thousand bucks but yeah in the end you only learn right yeah it builds up your experience your yeah. sense of yeah, I don't know how to call it, but you know, like your instinct somehow. Yeah, like, exactly. oh, I, I should trust this guy, you know. Hey, dude, yeah. I have a project for you. Uh, not you, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, ah, oh, dude, I'm paying you 700 bucks. Like, yeah. uh, I'm like, yeah, sure, man. <laughs> Just pay me when it's done. And, uh, then I, and then he said, yeah, you know, I have to talk to my bank. Oh, my bank said I shouldn't pay you. And I was like, but my image is done. What, what do you want? My bank said so he ended up he ended up not paying me and i i still haven't like i haven't called him out on it like publicly mm-hmm. because i feel it's very sometimes it's an unprofessional thing to do uh and it could cost him his job but <laughs> yeah i I, ne- I never had that, that kind of situation yet but yeah um so i just i just like rolled with it and i was mm-hmm. like okay this is a this was my mistake as well and you know i'll just learn from it and yeah. we'll, we'll just continue so yeah, so at this point, this image is is almost kind of done, right? We we can maybe create another pathway, but maybe we can even like, break it off. Maybe we don't even need it. So yeah, man, it looks I'll, so cool. You, you are you always using a lot of layers? No, no, not at all. Not at all, right? No, like in fact, you always end up collapsing it. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, you do that uh, as well. Right? I, I do the same. Yeah. yeah. So for me, it's like the few the fewer layers, the better, because I especially like. It's like in 3D, I work in a very chaotic way. I end up destroying things and forgetting to save stuff. And that's fine. Um, but in Photoshop, I'm the same. I'm a very destru- I have a very destructive and a very, you yeah, know, very I, quick I, way of working. I do the same because, you know, it, to me, it's a little bit uncomfortable to have, mm-hmm. to, if I want to work on this building right here, yeah. I, then I, go, I have to go to my layer things and uh search for that layer and it takes like uh it holds me back you know it it slows me down a lot and Mm. i always prefer to use fewer layers yeah and in the end i'm always collapsing it but unlike you did i'm like duplicating all those layers and then Mm -hmm. collapsing collapsing them oh yeah that's what what that's that's what i do a lot of times as well or or i just save steps you know i make separate uh, psd files and i just copy it to there so when yeah when we make a big mistake we can always go Mm -hmm. back to that you know previous layer exactly and that's how you can do those gifts that those process gifts later exactly yeah so it's you you have the steps yeah it's uh (laughs) yeah it's useful in a way so you know it's it's fun, but I I think that way of working reflects our personalities as well because we're both kind of jumpy people, right? Of Especially course, yeah. in conferences, we like always <laughs> like jumping around, like look, yeah, que pasa, que pasa, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's always it, fun, man. Yeah, it's, it's always a good time. <laughs> it's uh, you know, conferences are really great. Mm-hmm. I think people like because because of your character, because you have such a wonderful personality, people start uh. No, I'm talking about you here. Um, oh, oh. You, you know, people, but people start to get to you know you. Like, you don't have to, I mean? Leon. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Thank no, you. But, Thank you, bro. But that's, how, but that's how they get to know you. And it's like the same as with me. I think I got most of my jobs because mm-hmm. I visit so many conferences and I act like a a mother, you know. Because they the met time. you, you know, in person and they know how you, the mm-hmm. way you are. And it, it somehow attracts um, them, you know. Yeah. 
like oh i, it, I really like the vibe of this guy you know yeah yeah so and the most important he's not thing only is a good artist but he's a good guy as well it's and, it's it's very important to if you if you're just like be yourself and it, and if yourself is like a weird messed up jumpy guy then that's all that's all right as long <laughs> as long as you roll with it right exactly yeah uh, I, i mean uh, you you of course you probably met some people as well that are really trying hard to i don't know belong or something uh, then yeah. and, and you can really see that they're you know they're they're trying to be something that they're not and like my advice would be like just be yourself and people will accept it even even if being yourself is being like a narcissistic douche that's mm -hmm. even better than trying to be someone that you're not right <laughs> exactly yeah sure uh, i i uh, had this this conversation with gordon uh -huh. on a previous episode we made about um it was actually the first time i i, I showed up on the on the channel uh and it was about community you know about talking about these events and all that stuff and yeah we we both concluded in the same stuff you said like it's mm -hmm. very important to go out there uh meet them face to face you know and it's it's way better this way than you know just adding them on facebook out of nowhere oh, yeah, you know yeah. is yeah. that what they call a cold call i think like i, I don't know without yeah. any previous you know <laughs> any previous talk any previous anything you just oh yeah 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 oh that's i had that with max <laughs> it was so crazy like yeah i, I was we were, max and i were, were talking about video games and i was showing my portfolio and i was like oh yeah i'm pretty proud of this portfolio and then mm -hmm. uh, half an hour later he did a talk and i was like oh god i've been talking to a speaker this whole, oh, this dude. whole time it's so and, cool that you said this because i had the same thing yeah it's, it's i met so him cool. i weird. met him the same way I yeah. met him. Uh, we were having breakfast, and yeah. um, uh, he was sitting there, and I I knew all the rest, but him. So mm -hmm. I sat next to him, and you know, he introduced himself. I'm like, "Hey, I'm Adrian. Hey, I'm Max." So, so yeah, what do you do? And yeah, we both started started to talk about what what do we do. Yeah. And then I'm like, "Hmm, so cool. He's a matte painter. Yeah, nice. I That's don't know too many matte painters." <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Uh, then I realized he's a huge dude and he yeah. <laughs> he's doing like like yeah he's doing a talk and oh man it, it was it was i i like um when people like from that level do this because they don't intimidate you somehow yeah, in exactly, case in yeah. case you're that kind of guy you know i i personally feel uh really held back when i'm facing a huge superstar or oh something me like too that. me too very so much so when uh, they I'll, when I'll they do, don't tell yeah. you when they don't tell you uh, it makes things perfect, way easier yeah, yeah. that's yeah, when you so, can be yourself no problem no matter what yeah like you know even you know that i'm like i talk a lot but sometimes i get so shy up to the fact that i don't want to talk to like artists i really admire because i don't mm -hmm. want to bother them yeah you don't want to mess up saying something yeah. they might be you know upset to exactly or... yeah it's, and then about the thing like just being yourself sometimes it's really hard to be yourself if you're so intimidated by by someone's work or by how much you like someone um so but and then there's you know Jort van Welberg and he just dragged me uh, uh drags me <laughs> to people I really love and then I feel like a little fanboy yeah but then, but then after a minute you start you, you know you're introduced and yeah I know it only lasts you, for a few seconds you know yeah like and then you realize of... oh that's that's just it's just a guy or just just a lady as well like mm -hmm. they they just do their stuff yeah I had that with people. uh with like Jen, Jen Ravenna we did a talk at IFCC when I met mm -hmm. her I was like a little bit shy and i was like oh shit she's like super good yeah um and then after talking for a minute you're like oh that's yeah it was just like comfortable yeah but then you find out she's a really nice person she's yeah. really uh she has a lot of empathy and she tries to help you out and you're exactly. like oh so mm -hmm. yeah there's no reason i have to be scared of talking to these yeah guys, i know, mean every, everyone went through the same struggles like they mm -hmm. were probably shy as well when they met their heroes back in the back in the, their time yeah and and somehow i i actually like that feeling like being a little bit scared because mm -hmm. uh i don't know i feel like i'm not i'm not taking it for granted so um let's say i'm not assuming that uh i don't know how to explain this but Uh, it's like I'm not taking it for taking it for granted. Like they're not going to be what I think they're going to be, you know. Yeah. So they're they're always being themselves, mm -hmm. and I'm not. 
and it only takes me a few seconds because they trigger that in me yeah you know to be uh, myself and that's yeah why I, have I, like. to, i have to say though dude, dude you, you're like super natural at that Oh, like, I, like yeah, I, I have, I, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying, but I like it when I don't have to try, you know, <laughs> when it yeah, just but, happens. It doesn't look like you're trying, like, especially like at your first IFCC, like you are hanging out with all those pros and I was like, oh, dude, that, oh that man, that, is, that was, uh... but I swear that was just natural. I, I felt that way when I was with them, I was like, oh, I'm with the big guys. Yeah, but and, cool. and then I, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. They're just, you know, they're dudes, people, yeah. they're uh -huh. like friends i i uh -huh. feel like they're they're so yeah because of the the, the way they they approach you mm -hmm. and and yeah i i'm proud they do it this way and not you know pretending they're untouchable or yeah exactly yeah there there are people like this uh yeah, i haven't, I haven't met any like this yet but i think there's not there's not many of those yeah maybe uh like uh, just a few yeah too many yeah. egoistic thing i guess yeah uh yeah i, I don't know um but yeah it's good to know it there happens. are a lot of there's a lot of humble people out there that's yeah, what uh, inspires especially this industry is great for that i think there's a lot of very humble people by yeah. the way I, i'm creating some like quick uh farms like terrace farms because i was thinking about the story of this image like where do these people get their foods food so i i think that they are like on these giant like alien ship platforms mm -hmm it's very uh, like a regular surface. So they could use that to, to generate, to create little farms maybe. Oh, that's so I, cool now just, oh this um, reminds me of another, another, sorry, another painting you did like with a little twisted pyramid in the center of a desert, but oh, it's yeah. like a, it's like a, a city inside of a hole mm -hmm. or let me see if I can, I can find I it. I think that was made for a, a talk that I did for uh, cinema for D. For like a web uh, web webinar thing. Uh, <clears throat> that was long ago, isn't it? Yeah, it was. It was quite a while ago, and yeah. So yeah, in order to have these farms, they they do need to. It does need to be exposed to sunlight quite a lot. So it, it doesn't. It wouldn't make sense to make a farm on this thing as well because it's in the shadow of all these buildings. Mm -hmm. I'll just like maybe create something else. I don't know. It's a platform. Maybe I'll just uh, just clone some of the uh, buildings onto there, and uh, just, just I have just find it. Yeah, just found it. Look, look, this is the one. Yeah, uh, you know which one it is. Yeah, I have it on uh, the screen. It's Oasis Oasis Multinational. Oh, okay, that's the one. And there's a little river, and yeah, Oasis Multinational. There's a company catching the polluted water. Oh yeah! Oh, there, yeah, yeah. That was so it's like they're in the desert, and this is the only place. Oh yeah, that was a sucky water. painting. Yeah. But that was a uh, that was made in like a two, uh, probably two and a half hours or something, because I needed to do it for a demo, and it's actually almost the same workflow as I uh, as I use today, but not the octane scatter because I w wasn't allowed to use octane. <laughs> you weren't uh, allowed. Why? Why yeah. is that? That, like uh, is it is that a thing they told you like don't use octane i think they wanted to be about workflows in cinema 4d and not and not uh, in octane because octane oh, is a plugin. i yeah. get it it does but, octane i mean does cinema 4d have something like scattering or uh, uh no no they don't and that uh but i think they will have and they have that cloner tool that i showed right where you can copy just your building like a bunch mm -hmm. of times yeah. you can use that to scatter as well and it's it's just as powerful but you but have to it, do it manually isn't it You have to do it manually, and it's a bit heavier on your machine because oh. uh, with the scatter tool, it, it just um, like your image viewer doesn't, or like your workspace doesn't get heavier because the instances you have, like the buildings, they only show up as little lines in your scene. Yeah. But in your render, they show up as the uh, as as proper buildings. So all right, so I think oh, man, this is looking a... yeah, this is looking so good already. Dude, thanks so much. You've been adding a lot of detail, man. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun, and like I said, it's basically like that's my my only drive that I have is like having fun with the work I do. If I don't have fun, uh, the work usually becomes very sucky. Yeah, it's not and that it 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 speaks by itself, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if I'm forcing too much, if I'm like, oh, dude, I need a new portfolio piece and I need it right now, then it mm. will be almost it, it will be almost always bad. Mm -hmm. 
and now it's a because we're goal. yeah, and now we're just talking so casually, it's it's easier to just like noodle along and try and draw something that that makes sense. It's actually cool that you have this ability to you know uh, work and talk at the same time. Yeah, it's especially on this phase, on this stage, which is the design one. The, uh -huh. it, it, you're not only detailing, you know, you've been building stuff around and so forth. Yeah, when it, I do it, that, it, I actually yeah. need to be a little bit silent. Mm. Yeah, you know what? Because we we are talking out loud about the design decisions. I mean, if it, if there's any design involved, like mm -hmm. uh, the decision, the decisions I'm taking because we're talking about it out loud, it's really easy to then implement it. So, all right, so uh, one last thing we can do is check the values of this thing, like the overall values. I mean, we're sure. already working in black and white, so, but yeah, what we easier. can do is like we can go to dust and scratches and like make our image more abstract. Oh, that's a cool idea. Like this. Yeah. And if the image still reads, mm -hmm. which it kind of does, right? Yeah. It, if it still reads, that it, then it means that the, the composition is kind of working. Mm -hmm. uh, because like, if you look at a thumbnail, there's not a big difference between this and this. So even with the whole blurry thing going on, it's still clear to see what we what we were trying to do there. Like there's obviously a tower, there are some roads leading up to it, there's maybe a city around it. Hmm. And then this is just noise. Oh, uh, interesting so, technique, dude. So Yeah, what, I learned from be... a buddy of mine. Oh, cool. Yeah, I heard more people doing this. Um like blurring but but it was not this way it was another filter just blurring oh, the yeah. image you know yeah or like uh, there's one, another one there's another one in the filter like the uh, is cut, it cut, cut out cut out yeah yeah cut so out. it's kind of a comic thing like, mm -hmm. really really simplified this oh is yeah one. yeah and that works great as well especially if you put it on like low yeah plus you see can, like this exactly yeah. it's it's kind of the same like mm -hmm. it's still it still kind of works it still kind of works. Like what what would work probably is if I would make the um, the area behind this tower a little bit darker, uh, so it stands out a bit more. Mm -hmm. So I can I can maybe do that real quick. Won't won't make it really better, but it it is one solution to make the image look less muddy. Just like very subtle, like this. It already like stands out a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's just keep it like this then. And what would be like the next step? I I'm I mean I'm, I'm assuming you're not going to cover everything here, but uh, what would be what would you do next in the next step? Like, would you zoom in and detail like every not every single building, but some of them, or you just color this up? And yeah, uh, well, I, I I never turn black and white into color. So this this right now would be the end result because for me it's really hard to turn a black and white image into color. Mm -hmm. So if I that's the only downside of my workflow. Like if if I want a a very detailed image, I have to go back into my renderer, uh, like uh, render the detailed image and then start over. But but normally I wouldn't go as far as as I went now with the sketch. I yeah. would have stopped after fifteen or twenty minutes, and now we've probably done a half an hour to, I, I don't know, a bit more. Do you I, ever I use the, the do you ever use the color proof mode? Uh no, what's that? Oh, that's something Noah Bradley told me in in IFCC. <laughs> oh, okay. Um it was Wait a minute. I'm not sure where to find that, but if you press control Y, oh yeah, it enables oh, like CMYK mode. Yeah, man. Yeah, I I do use that. Yeah, so you have to switch it. You have to turn it into Color proof mode, and yeah, I it turns the image black and white, and you still can, you know, sample colors. Mm, yeah, that's right. So I have it. I have it there on my hotkey. Exactly. That's something like, I'm I'm using pretty often. It's great. I I love it as well. So you don't have to, you know, turn your image black and white like for real. Mm -hmm. And you can keep the color and still, um, let's say iterate upon the values oh the yeah, yeah that's really great um that's that's something i could use to uh to improve that that workflow maybe a little bit hmm. but the only downside uh, thing i guess is that you have to keep pressing it to check the colors and check yeah. back and then go back to black and white and Whoa, then make sure you boring. haven't sampled a different color because hmm. you know in terms of values there are some colors that might seem the same value yeah yeah so <laughs> 
And yeah, you got yeah. It. So that's a bit of a downside. Be careful and, with that. Um, and what happens now? Because I was so fast with the sketching, um, I now have like a lot of brush strokes, which I probably don't want um, in my final result. I I would probably like approach this like way more carefully with photos and. But for but for a sketch, uh, for showing this to a client, I think this this will provide enough information to work with. Mm-hmm. Like we can we can maybe uh, if we want to provide at least a bit of skill because that's something that's lacking right now is we can maybe create a couple of figures walking down um, walking down a road or something. So just some tiny human humanoid. It doesn't need to be bigger than this. Just like a little caravan here, like hmm. oh, there's yeah. Dudes. I mean, judging by the the scale of the buildings, that seems like a pretty fair yeah scale. Yeah, they could probably be a little bit bigger, but you know, and and then I just have to match the shadow again. Um, so I'll just go on lower opacity and draw this line for the uh, character, so they feel a little bit like more grounded and like they're actually in the scene. Mm-hmm. So like this, like this, like this, and now if we zoom out. See, it's already... Oh, quite yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really, really good, man. Thanks. Oh, it's impressive Thanks that so you much. did this in, in one hour and 30 minutes. Oh, okay, yeah. So from uh, from 3D to finish? Or what? Everything. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, 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 that's solid. It's not a personal best, but no, no, it's... Uh, just kidding. Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> I uh, <laughs> it's not sports for fuck's sake, uh, but like an hour and a half is, uh, if you use that amount of time to provide a sketch for a client, it's it's pretty nice. And and because I have the model already, I can just I saved myself a lot of time, right? Because if he says now oh, I need the tower to be bigger, I'll just model a bigger tower, or oh, I need I need this to be palm trees, I'll just model palm trees, right? Yeah. So with with that an hour and a half of work you not only get a sketch to present to your client but you also did a lot of preparation for the final image mm-hmm. exactly yeah. yeah and that's and that's a really uh like that's a, a really to work on yeah and that's and that's a really big benefit of using 3d all right oh, so man. plus now you can take different shots from you know yeah i i could i, I can make like any a front other angle render. yeah i can make a render from that walkway like see how the tower looks like uh anything yeah and just make uh, more sketches uh so yeah let's zoom in and then maybe wrap up is, is there anything you would like to to talk oh, about oh man i would like to ask you something like now that you're here you know at this level uh if you look back at the way you learn things mm-hmm. if if you had to start all over again uh let's say what would you do differently um would you probably, change a thing or rather just do the same again? Probably nothing. Probably I wouldn't change anything. I, I would have done more figure drawing and try not as not be as stuck as much in this uh, workflow. But because of this workflow, I, I do have a steady stream of clients, uh, which is a good thing because I'm allowed to live, actually, uh, and make money out of, uh, out of doing this work. But for personal stuff, I would love to make more intricate scenes with like people selling stuff, you know, in, in a market street that would with weird architecture in the background. But in terms of how I started out, I, I think for me it was really good that I that I started learning this out of uh, like my motivation was fun and not I have to be at, at that company when I you know two years from now. So uh, fun was my only like drive to really do this, and it's st- and still still is because I feel like when when you are having a lot of fun in your work, your audience or the you know the people that follow you or whatever they can see that that you're that you're having fun with it. Yeah, because you, um, you you manage to communicate it. Yeah, and as long as you love the work that you're doing, I think people will end up loving it as well, right? Yeah, um, of course. So they they feel identified. Yeah, so even if you draw like super niche, I don't know, like uh, half unicorn, half male figures, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Even if you draw that and you do it a lot and you create like a very specific style around it, people will love that. Yeah. Uh, Well, that's a great answer. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I try to tell this to people that are starting out, like 
don't try to be intimidated by everything that's happening on our station. Just, you know, just have fun and do what you want to do. Like, what is the story that you want to tell? Yeah, like stop um, comparing yourself to stop others. Stop comparing yourself. Stop, yeah, because like you, that. because you would never be like anything like that other guy. And yeah. why would you want to be, right? You're your own person. I mean, we all have idols and favorite artists and so on. But yeah, of course. you have to set yourself a goal, you know? Mm -hmm. But don't always compare yourself to, you know, oh, look at what that guy's doing. Yeah, I'm falling behind. No, you're not falling behind, but no. <laughs> you just got to keep going and have and fun with it and you'll get there. Yeah, and I know it's hard. Like, I have this every day where I'm looking at this, like, person on art station i'm like oh my shit what did i do with my life and then i realized what what the fuck you're just you're having fun exactly why, why complain man yeah uh, it's uh, like something i heard from anthony jones he said it's all uh -huh. about time and effort you know if you put those together exactly uh, you'll get something time exactly and, and then we're also blessed with a community like this mm -hmm. that we, oh, i mean yeah. we, it we definitely get helps on, a lot yeah, we get to go on work holidays and have the most fun effort. That, that's crazy. <laughs> like every event is so like insane. Like, it it's really refreshing, you know. It's yeah. like it really pushing you, motivating, and mm -hmm. everything. So yeah. Well, I don't know, man. I I think this is coming to an end now. Yeah. So I don't know. It's been really cool to have you here, Leon. Yeah, I, I, you know, honestly, like, thank you so much for having me, and I, uh, I really enjoy, you know, talking to you w whenever I meet you, of course, and and even in this setting, it felt like uh, we were just like chatting about stuff, and that's same that's really here, great. same here. Yeah. I mean, to be my first interview, um, I felt a little bit nervous at, at the beginning, but then I realized uh, we were just having a normal conversation, you know, yeah, like, yeah. about I mean, your we're, workflow, we're friends, and, right? yeah, yeah, sure, so. It was it was really cool to have you here, man. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, again props to you for making this amazing piece in just one hour and a half, <laughs> and for sharing some good knowledge with the community. And Dude, yeah, yeah so it was my pleasure. You. Uh, I you know I really I really enjoy this this type of stuff. It's uh, I absolutely I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. It speaks by itself, like we said before. Cool. So yeah, thank you for coming over. Thank you for your time again. And well, I hope we can do this again soon. That would be a fantastic man. All right, dude. So thanks right. so much again and see you next Thank time. You. All right. See you, buddy. All right. So to those of you who are watching or listening, I hope you enjoyed as much as we did. And thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to us. And don't forget to share this with the ones you think might be interested in. And subscribe. Hit the bell because we have more interviews coming up and we don't want you to miss them out. And remember, you can also check this out on iTunes. And if you are really feeling it, you can support us on the new tip jar we have on coffee.com slash digital All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming by. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.